Hey YouTube, it's Little Rocker Cutie 2003, also known as Andre, back here with you once again. And as you can see, I've changed my shirt for the night because earlier today it was pretty warm here in Michigan. And as you saw, probably saw in most of my earlier videos, I was wearing a black t-shirt. So, and my room is the hottest in our house, so I had to change into something that would keep me a little bit cooler. But I'm back here again with you, and I'm doing a response video once again to Lunaria Claire. And I saw her video she just put up of her top five favorite film scores, and it got me to thinking what my favorite film scores would be. And I was looking through my collection mostly of what's in my room because mostly what's in my room is like my favorite stuff. But I'm going to go and she did top five. I'm going to go probably one up above that and I'm going to give you a top ten. These are in no particular order of course except for my top three. But I do have particular reasons for liking these particular scores in general. But let's get started. My first favorite score would have to be the score from Scarface, which was done by the great Giorgio Moroder, who normally wasn't known for doing movie scores. He was more of a, a behind the scenes like music producer. He worked with a lot of people in the 70s and 80s. He was he was mainly known mostly for working with Donna Summer throughout her disco days and into about 1980 when she came out with the album The Wanderer. Now, I think my favorite piece of music from this is the opening theme and the one that they play at the end and it's it's kind of the same bit of music but played in two different arrangements for the opening and the ending but I still think it's just a phenomenal score for a totally awesome gangster movie and if you know me you know I like my gangster movies next up the original Dawn of the Dead now, this score was actually done by an Italian group that was known mainly for working on Dario Argento's movies, and it was a band called Goblin. And once again, just like with Scarface, my favorite piece of music is probably the opening theme, just because of the way it sounds and the way it draws you into this apocalyptic world where zombies are coming back and they're killing people and... Every, and everybody's becoming a zombie, you know, there's people trying to escape. But the whole, once again, the whole score to this movie is just phenomenal. Next up would be the first Resident Evil. Now, if you know me, you know I like my rock and my metal. And the reason I picked this is because the score was done by Marco Beltrami, who was mainly known for doing the music for Scream, but he was helped out on this by Marilyn Manson. And the two of them together just came up with an incredible score for this movie. It really sets the tone and the feel for the movie. It's just an awesome, awesome score. Um, I actually have the score album on my computer, and it's one I listen to quite a bit because it's a score that I just love so, so much. Next up is one that appeals to the inner geek in me. Now, if you know if you know me or Buffy Zena Man, you know we are kind of geeks. And that's, that's cool to us. That's just who we were in high school, and that's still who we are today. You know, we were the kind of people, we were the outcasts. We hung out with, the out, with everybody who was considered outcasts. We didn't care what the popular people thought, you know. We just said, screw them, we're going to do our own thing. So, in that tone, my next score is Harry Potter. Now, I chose the Sorcerer's Stone, but I'm going to go with the whole franchise because every, every movie has a different tone and feel to it as the franchise goes on until you get to the end of it when it's just all-out war. But with this one, it really starts out just kind of like, an, like it's this sort of dreamlike type of score where you're being whisked away into the world of Harry Potter, of course, and the world of Hogwarts and all that. It's just really fun. Next up is Platoon. 
This is probably one of my favorite war movies, and again, another reason is for the score, and once again, for one of the main themes they use throughout throughout bits and pieces of the movie, which I think is called I think it's called Adagio for Strings, but it's this really somber, sad piece of music that they play at the beginning. There's a scene where um, uh, Sergeant Barnes and the rest of the platoon have left um, Sergeant Elias to die, and that score is playing as you see this shot in the movie. And of course, it plays again at the end when Charlie Sheen's giving his final narration, where he's saying, "I think, um, I think how it goes is we didn't fight the enemy; we fought ourselves." Next up is the Hills Have Eyes remake. Now, this is another one that had a pretty, I want to say, just a phenomenal score to go with this. I mean, just that opening theme that. Dun, dun. I can't really do it. My voice is kind of messed up. I've been talking so much today. <laughs> I've been doing so many videos for you guys today. You have no idea. But The Hills Have Eyes. Just an amazing score by Tom on Dandy, I think his name is. I'm not sure if it's one person or if it's a band. Maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong or if it's one person or if it's a band. Maybe you can kind of clarify that for me. Next up the original Fog. Now, this score was actually done by John Carpenter, who did a lot of his own scoring for his movies, and this is one that really stood out for me because it just draws you into the movie from the very beginning. It grabs you, it grabs hold, and it doesn't let go until the final shot. And it's just an amazing, amazing score for an awesome, awesome movie. And we're going to get into my top three now. Number three, The Terminator. Now, most people would think I would go with Terminator 2, but I actually like the score for the first Terminator a little bit more than Terminator 2 because it's from it's from the 84, you know, that's the year I was born, and it's got that 80s kind of feel to it, and it's just a really cool sounding score, especially the opening theme, and I do like how they re revamped it for Terminator 2, but there's just something about this original theme that just sticks with me. Now my next two are actually horror picks, and those of you who know me might know what these are, but number two, Halloween. Now I gotta say, I love the entire score to this movie, from the opening theme to uh, Haddonfield 1978, which is also called Lori's Theme. Uh, there's the dun, 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 when, when, uh, Michael Myers is chasing Lori at, at, near the end of the movie. And it's just the score that really just draws you into this world and it kind of grabs hold and just doesn't let go. It's just that unnerving and that jarring I'd have to say but it's a score that I absolutely absolutely love and it's another one that John Carpenter did himself and my number one favorite score for the original Nightmare on Elm Street which was done by Charles Bernstein now most of you would think that I like the main theme that the main theme would be my favorite piece of music but actually my favorite piece of music in this movie to the score is during the scene where Nancy is setting up all the booby traps in the house and she's getting ready to fight Freddy. If you go to our channel and look at the channel trailer, that's actually the music I use because it's my favorite piece of music and it's just, it's kind of like a way of saying that Nancy's not going to take it anymore and she's ready to fight back, which I think is just totally awesome. I mean, I grew up loving Nightmare on Elm Street. It was one that's always stuck with me from an early age. It's one I'll never quit loving. I mean, my mom loves it. She instilled it in me. We both have the set. I mean, what else can you say? It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal score. But... That's it for my top 10 movie scores. Uh, this will be uploaded pretty soon, so 
and I hope everybody gets to see it. So, once again, this is Little Rocker Cutie 2005, also known as Andre. I'm telling you to enjoy life, enjoy some Skittles, enjoy some Starburst, and in the immortal words of Chris, eat some chicken. And I'll see you guys later in my next video.